everybody that walks through the door, they want their first tattoo on their forearm, you know? If it's not on their <laughs> neck or their face or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, face tattoos were out of control. That was like, never. Yeah, that's, I, I mean... It's it's now just like the, the recipe era, for a right? SoundCloud rapper, yeah. you know what I mean? Dude, that's what I'm saying. You just need like, like face tattoos and some crazy <laughs> hair and that's it. You're a SoundCloud 10, 000, rapper. 10,000 or more followers, face tattoos, some gold, and you're there. Athletes, entrepreneurs, and those who've embraced the necessary change for the better. They've endured, discovered, rebuilt. But what about you? What about you? Are you waiting for life? Or is life waiting for you? This is the come up. Come up. Uh, I got the guys from Black Pelican Tattoo, Mr. Shane Woodward and Mr. Jason Holly. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Man, this is going to be a blast. I, I'm so many questions. <laughs> uh, dude, so let's start off with thank you for coming, but let's talk about entrepreneurship, man. Let's start. You guys opened the shop how long ago now? Uh, five years. That was a big move for you guys, too, right? Yeah. So why don't we get into the story of Black Puck and how it started, right? It, it was a long time coming. I mean, I've known Jason for shit, probably 15 years now, 14 or 15 yeah. years, and we worked at different shops. And his, the shop he worked at, went through some stuff, so we went to another, and finally we were working together at this one particular shop. Long story longer, the guy that owns the place wasn't a tattooer, very concerned with monetary things, and just happened to kind of start noticing that our our revenue, our profit, was behind motorcycles and rims and trucks and vacations, and the shop was falling apart. Okay, <laughs> so so it comes over. It comes over, and I got with Jason. I was like, you know what, man? I got a family. You got a family. What are we doing? I have a clientele. You have a clientele. What are we doing? And basically, it was everything happens when it's supposed to, right? But I completely agree. I know he had been thinking about it as long as I had been thinking about it, but the fear of getting out on your own and making that step because I had it easy, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the first time that we ever actually even talked about it was like eight years before we actually oh. opened the shop, you know? <laughs> and then it was just like, you know, we talk about it. We kind of look at some places. We get semi-serious. And then at the last minute, we get cold feet, you know, just fear dude, of dude. the unknown, you know? It's, Absolutely. I mean, and, yeah, and, and complacency is comfortable as hell, dude. I was making decent money. I didn't have to worry about anything business-oriented, which bullshit. I still don't kind of much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that was the deal, and, and I had to get – we had to push each other out of that comfort comfort zone and be like, fuck it, dude. Let's, let's, let's try. What's the worst that can happen? We'll be out some money. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> – But our integrity will still be there because we tried. Absolutely. And you yeah. feel comfortable with that. Right. Let's talk about the success Black Falcon has been, right? So you guys are, well, for me, well, obviously, since I only go to you guys now, mm. but it's everywhere. All the Ray, all my friends, I, I, every time I go there, there's like six people I know getting tattooed. Uh, it, it's a blast. The energy mm. in there is awesome. You guys have a great culture. And there's a lot of things behind it, right? So, you know, being sober is one of them. Yeah, I, think, I think that gives you, we've had some great conversations yeah. about family staying sober when I was fucking relapsing and all that shit. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? You're like, what are you doing, dude? Uh, yeah, your huh? life's going to fall dude, apart you're if you do something, <laughs> You got to do something, dude. And I was like, ah. But, dude, it's the energy. It's the people. It's the quality of work. And definitely, you. I feel like you guys have brought up a lot of good tattoo artists, too, man. You guys have some really good heavy hitters now, too. It's not only, like, in the beginning, it was you two, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All the hard work, and you're like, we were talking about all that, you know, city of Boca permitting and all this oh, yeah. bullshit. Yeah, the yeah. stigmatism of tattooing. <laughs> and Hi, Boca. We love you. <laughs> yes, we love you, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, it, it, dude? It, you guys started this little shop, and it's like, oh, shit. they really went for it, right? Because you guys yeah. talked about it before. I mean, we were freaking out because of the location. You know right. I mean, we're not on a main thoroughfare. Near am I? Exactly. Yeah. But like you were saying, we had people that were behind us. You guys had a great reputation. That's right. 
and we and I and I knew and Jason knew that no matter where we went, people would follow us because we're fucking like they're. I mean, we're all one big family when it really all boils down. If you take it to that, to we that are. level, it, you know, your I mean? therapist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys, Absolutely. the job description is amazing. It's it's DJs, <laughs> uh, therapists, yep. artists. Yep. You know, you hear all the stupid stories and you guys actually, con- like I, the integrity of work you guys do is really, really cool. And, and everybody talks about it too. Like, hey, dude, who was that, Jane? Holly, who did it? Well, and between awesome. us, we got almost, almost 40 years experience. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you guys, yeah. you guys didn't pop up and just make a store, right? Yeah, yeah. it would have like, never worked. No, 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 no. And you guys have been in the game forever, mm-hmm. right? You guys have been names in Florida for quite some time. Like, yeah. and you know everybody I've got in a tattoo. You're like, oh, yeah, that's this guy's work. Mm-hmm. And then so on and so forth. But but let's talk about family. So you guys are huge family guys. You know, you're both fathers. Mm-hmm. And you got a... <laughs> we've heard some yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you got a... a yeah, dude, you yeah. got like a tribe and you have the widest range, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, they're all super spread out. You know, my oldest is, well, she just turned 22. And then I have a 16-year-old and an 11-year-old. Hey, and which one's the one that wants a tattoo, getting a tattoo on her hands, neck? What was it? That's the 22-year-old. Yep, she's oh, getting her, her fingers tattooed tomorrow, actually. Are you sure it's not tonight? Yeah, it's tomorrow. March, though. Yep. So how do you feel about that? Let's talk about that. Because the whole tattoo culture now has changed. She's um, the best kid. To yeah, I mean, like, she she's... Wants. For real she's awesome she yeah. really right. is man we, we like she this. you know she had some some issues in you know when she was younger and she worked through that stuff and you know she works really hard she has a good job she essentially has a career you know she's a college graduate she's got a bachelor's she she's not a fuck up you know so <laughs> she wants to do a couple little tattoos on her fingers whatever you know i mean who am I to say? You know, there's an 18 year old girl that's getting her face tattooed this week. You know, like, what do I care about? A couple little tattoos on her fingers. Well, let's know? talk about that a little bit about face tattoos and how culture really today, in my opinion, has changed or flipped in the last 15 years, right? Because yeah. oh, yeah. where I'm from, it's crazy because it was like, all right. I'm from a conservative Catholic, you know, we've talked about this. Yeah, Southern, Southern Baptist over here, but Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I go back to Nicaragua and I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're still tagging to it yourself? Like, yeah, this is what I do. And I used to, and I did it to stand out back in the day. And maybe I was dealing with some stuff that I wanted more attention or whatever. Mm. Or like we always say, stuff we do to look cooler. Absolutely. Right? Ain't no shame in that. Yeah, dude. It, uh. it is what we did. Yep. Right? But now it's like if you don't have tattoos, you're like the odd man out, right? So it's like, I, I feel like it, there's a big shift, right? Oh, for sure. And not only that, which comes to the whole more and more tattoo shops popping up everywhere, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, the dynamic has definitely changed. Like, the guy that taught me how to tattoo, nobody at the shop had hand tattoos, neck tattoos, face tattoos, like forearms you know like long sleeves and you can cover it up and he always pushed me like not to even tattoo my forearms you know and now it's like everybody that walks through the door they want their first tattoo on their forearm you know if it's not on their <laughs> neck or their face or something yeah. you know what i mean well face tattoos are out of control that was like never yeah, that's i mean it's it's now just like the, the recipe era, for a right? SoundCloud rapper, yeah. you know what I mean? Dude, that's what I'm saying. You just need like, like it. face tattoos and some crazy <laughs> hair and that's it. You're a SoundCloud 10, rapper. 10,000 or more followers, face tattoos, some gold, and you're there. But it's changed, right? So yes. it, it's changed the game. It's changed the people hanging out at tattoo shops. It's changed everything. Mm. Yeah. Right? Because the stigma back in the day is like, I mean, dude, we'll you hang out at tattoo shops. Grandmoms, shop? moms, dogs. That's what I'm saying, right? And shit like that. Absolutely did not happen back in the day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Like, I remember because I was a biker, right? Yeah. I love, I was belong to an MC, and you would see, like, oh, dude, where are you going? We're going to go hang at the tattoo yeah. shop, right? Because that's yeah. what we're doing first, today. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. And you those are, the you tattoo know, shop, you smoke some weed, you, yeah. you do some nose candy in yeah, the back. Yeah, bro, there's people you know, yeah, the day. It was, it was crazy. The first tattoo I ever got was this place in Augusta, Georgia, and it was a, a long, narrow building, benches on this side, benches on this side. This was Outlaws, this was Angels. You didn't cross them. 
there was a door to go back to get tattooed that had bars on it. And this old man named Don would fucking walk out with a stick and be like, you stay there, you stay there, you can come back. And I was like, oh, shit, this is for real, yeah. dude. <laughs> this is for real. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. Now, obviously, I don't want to knock on TV shows, but they have opened the door for... Yeah, dude, you know, Miami Inc. changed the game. Oh, for yeah. Them, you know. I mean, it's annoying because people think they know more than they do, but it's a blessing because we're taking care of our families as a result of that. Dude, but it's a business. At the end of the Absolutely. day, you guys became entrepreneurs Yeah, and said, hey, we're going to go through all these challenges. We're going to embrace this fear of the unknown, and we're going to do something that we've been in for so long that I think we could do better mm-hmm. with our funk on it, right? Mm-hmm. And Black Pelican is... Basically the embodiment of that. Yeah. But of all that fear, how did you guys like? All right, so you guys must have had meals together, and then who pushed who? That's what I wanted. I was like, all right, dude, that's it. Let's do this. Oh, was it circumstances that all no, timing? I, I mean, I think we were both on board, like yeah, right off the rip, dude, because we were sick of where we were, right? Because shit wasn't getting any better, right? You know what I mean? And like, I know my old lady and his as well are like, you guys are good. What are you yeah. doing? And we're like, eh, wait, wait. she's like, shut the fuck up and go do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so <laughs> the, the finding a spot is always tricky because either it's owned by one major company in that owns everything. <laughs> in Boca, and they're not too. They're not too prompt to. No. Not too shops. And the major, major thoroughfare, like federal, of course, and the, the roads that lead to the beach are where you would like to be. But there's nothing. There was nothing available. Or either it was so ridiculously it's, expensive. It's insane. Rent like here 15, is insane. Like dollars a square foot. I mean, are you kidding <laughs> yeah, me? That's right easy. <laughs> yeah. That's easy. Okay. Well, so we found the spot we <clears> had, <throat> and we were like, eh, I don't know, I don't know. And it was like, fuck it. The dude gave us a huge, like, come up when we said, hey, we want to move in here. He was like, all right, we'll do this for you. We'll do this that's for awesome. you. That's awesome. You guys just make it happen. And he was, he was laid back, you know? Yeah. Like, the dude rides bikes. He's got kids. He's... Not really like small time, but in comparison to that that one Boca entity, he is small time, you right. know. But right. it was cool to like sit down with the guy that actually owned the property, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm really excited. I want a tattoo shop in my plaza, you know." And that's something that we had never heard. You no. know, we were we were calling places that had for rent signs up on Federal, and you know, we would ask. Hey, you know, I want to come look at this space or whatever. When's a good time to set it up? Well, what do you and want to put? What in? do you want to put in there? Tattoo shop? No thanks. And they'd hang up immediately, like not even wait for a response. I can't tell you how many times that yeah, happened. Yeah, and I'm sure it, there's a lot of riffraff in Did this business, not, until, obviously. Trust me. And I'm sure, like, a credible shop that has like solid, obviously. educated people behind it is tough to come by. It's getting more and more prevalent because. People are learning because of demand. Because of the demand, and nobody wants to go to somebody that's nodding out and they're fucking set up. You know what I mean? They want right. some like some legitimacy behind it. You know, so it's getting better. But I'm sure these places have heard. But we just couldn't get a shot. Right. You know what I mean? It was like every door was just getting closed, closed. They would go look at a place that'd be like, "We're gonna put you in the back." Of the back of the back. <laughs> in that corner like, where no one wants to hang yeah, out. Yeah. Exactly. And it and smells like, funky. The floors are destroyed. <laughs> the walls are destroyed. We're not going to help you out. We're not going to fix anything before and you get you in get here. You just time deal and with your rent it. Starts you know? Today. You know, so it was a pain in the dick. So we found this spot and everything just clicked. You know what I mean? It's like. But got, now, you know, Black Pelican is now the anchor to that side of that whole plaza. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so you guys, everything come and go on the side, and you're like, dude, these guys are here to stay. Yeah, right. But that's what the integrity of the shop. That got you guys just did a community barbecue, which I I heard was a huge success. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in town, but I would have been there. (laughs) You know, I know you noticed. (laughs) Trust me, I know I was gonna hear it, so I I just put it out there, beat you to the punch. I got you. But the reality is that you guys are part of the community. You guys support. Our lifestyles, you know, like it's, dude, you guys are one of us, so you guys treat everybody the same. There's no bullshit about, Mm -hmm. you know, especially down here, there's that whole, oh my God, Boca del Rey recovery scene that people don't like. Yeah, Yeah. of course. And, but we're doing, we're parts, we're part of the entrepreneurial team of part of the success of Boca, Mm -hmm. if you look at it too, right? Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, dude, we pay taxes. I mean, we're you establishing know? businesses in the city of Boca, paying the taxes, paying all the licensees and fees, dealing with everything we need to deal with, and providing a environment where there is no drugs, no alcohol, no That's what I'm shenanigans going There's on. There's none you know? of that. Nobody's and it's smashing not even tolerated. windows or running into cars yeah. or, you know, leaving garbage all over the place where our businesses are, you right. know? And it wouldn't be tolerated anyway, right? So, yeah. No. You no, know, that's the energy that we have there. Yeah. So I want to just kind of pivot a little bit and let's talk about pastimes because I know you guys have are super passionate about some fishing. Yeah. Let's go into yeah. that and how you keep everything balanced, you know, family life and mindset. And I don't fish that much. Anymore. Well, I know, I know. I, I know <laughs> Shane switched. Shane's we ha- we have a bond now. We, ha- we have yeah. switched over to, and Shane has become an but, official but Jason, meathead. Jason's the, he's, He's like the, I don't know if he's got batteries or what it is, but this fool runs 24-7. Work, family, fishing, work, fun stuff. I mean, it's nuts to watch him work. So let's go into that. How do you balance that out? I mean. I don't know. I mean, you know, we were talking about it the other day. You're telling me I need to get more sleep, but, you know, I got three hours of sleep last night. And here I am. I had one cup of coffee at (laughs) 8 o'clock this morning. I'm like. I'm fine, you know? I'm not banging five-hour energies in <laughs> no, my car, <laughs> like IV and bang you know, while I'm at work or whatever. I don't, I just, I don't know. My body runs on on very little time. And, uh, you know, it's, the hours of the shopper are convenient so that I can still get up in the morning and like, you know, see my kid off to school and make sure that she gets to the bus okay. And, you know, take care of the stuff I need to take care of around the house and then go into the shop, work in the shop. And, you know, the... I don't like the fact that I don't get to have like dinner with my family all that much because of the time we get out of work. But then, you know, I get out of work and everybody in my house is asleep and I'm not tired. So, you know, a lot of the times I'll go fishing Mm -hmm. and it's almost more of like, it's almost more of a meditation than like a recreational activity. You know, I mean, I'm s- sitting there by myself, like even if I'm fishing with someone else, I'm not talking to them. I'm no. just doing the same repetitive motion over and over, and it, it literally clears my head completely the because work. I'm not thinking about anything at all. And, you know, you need that however you find it, whether you go and do yoga or you go to the Buddhist temple or you practice meditation at home, you need that time to just clear all of the space out in your head because if everything just keeps running in there i mean you know your brain never stops you know you come in and we sit down and we're just talking everything all day long and i I feel like if you can't push it out and clear your head and start over again then everything gets so jumbled it just piles on top of each other and it seems overwhelming to the point where you're not getting anything you're done you're just obsessing over everything that there is to be done so you would say fishing is part of like your routine of calm or like there's a lot of routines that people say for staying in nothing worse than somebody coming up and talking to you while you're fishing is it? It's so oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're just like in this perfect space in your mind, not Dude, thinking about be, anything bro. at yeah. all. And, you know, some guy comes up and he's like, so what are they biting tonight? You know? And you're just like, I don't fucking know, bro. Get <laughs> if the fuck I knew, away from me. <laughs> I'd be reeling it in right now, homie. Yeah, yeah. So it's part of like your, your self-care process for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. it's super important to you. Like, so I was talking to a lot of very successful entrepreneurs and they're like dude it's all about the time my rituals time effectiveness and how i prepare for my day you know some people go wake up at three do their meditations do all their lines you know like i'm gonna do this 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 and this but i always do an hour of working out an hour of clearing my head something like this so they can keep sharp and stuff like that so you were saying that's part of your what about the mindset of when you go to work, because I know you guys are super lax, super everything, but you guys run a tight ship over there, right? You guys have rules, you guys have all this, but we're, um, you guys, are, I've never heard any drama. No, no, because with anybody, we're, we're five dudes that are working in a small space, so there's going to be issues. But because of where we come from, be like, what's wrong? Let's, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's just get it out right now. It don't matter. Resentment's kill, dude. Fuck yeah. It's, <laughs> That that helps, you know what I mean. So everybody can kind of check everybody, and we'll we'll stray a little bit, but it's like get, get on back over here, you know what I mean. We don't let each other go too far, right? 
Oh. And, you know, at the same time, like, we're dealing with professionals, you know? Yeah. We're not hiring guys that they don't know what they're doing or screwing up and out there fucking off and not taking things seriously, you know? Everybody that works there, they're professional, they're adults, they conduct themselves accordingly, and it's, it's rare that there's even an issue that you have to bring up mm -hmm. because of the types of people that we choose to have work there. So a question of mine, if, if somebody walks in and says, hey, I want to get this specific tattoo, right? Like, is there like, all right, if it wants, you know, this type, we're going to send them to Paul. Or, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So yeah. let's give the guys a shout out. Let's talk about who's, what's their specific, you know. Uh, I mean, Paul, Paul's like, he's like the all around dude. He, he grew up in a street shop just like we did, which is different than today because we had to know how to tattoo everything. All of it. All of that's you guys and well, you know what I mean. And obviously, you can't be a master of all, but you learn it. So Paul is that guy. He knows how to do everything and does it all well. Steve is artistic as shit. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. on another planet, dude. And that's a good. He's, yeah, and he is mean shoe game. He is nonstop <laughs> ideas, constant creativity. You know, the guy is constantly pushing the envelope, even with himself, drawing, painting, coming up with these new unique styles that you've never seen anything like, you know, and he does, he does all tattooing well, yeah. you know, super detailed black and gray stuff to, you know, big Japanese, shit, big like. Japanese, traditional, these obscure styles that he comes up with. I mean, he, he just does it all well for sure. He you never know? stops. That dude is working 24 seven. Yeah. I mean, he comes into the shop, he tattoos all day, he goes home and he paints all night. You know, and just That's his thing. does the That's same it. thing the next yeah. day. And if there's no tattoos to do at the shop, he's yeah. painting at the shop. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And what would you say that your guy's specialty is for your individual? Um, well, like, I think Steve enjoys doing larger scale Japanese stuff the most, yeah. even though he's so versatile, he can do <clears> anything. Um, you know, Paul, I think, really enjoys doing large-scale Japanese and, and traditional mm -hmm. style, but more in his own style. He, he kind of takes traditional and changes the rules a little bit and makes it his own. And um, Which is cool. Mm -hmm. Mark, you know, Mark, same thing. I mean, he does... Solid. Solid test. He does more of a... Like one shot. Right. Like boom, boom. Yeah, but, I mean, the kid, he can knock out oh, huge sure. back pieces, too, you know? I mean, like, the first back piece he ever did is leaps and bounds ahead of the first back piece I ever did, you know? Um, <laughs> That's but, the, the evolution you know, of the game, right? Japanese yeah. sleeves, uh, you know, one-shot American traditional tattoos or little one-shot Japanese tattoos. He's really been doing a lot more with Japanese lately and the stuff that he's coming up with for just these small, like, single-shot Japanese tattoos where, like, you know, you don't have to get a sleeve and, and spend sessions in there. You can come in and in one time walk out with like a really cool, super unique Japanese tattoo. The stuff he's doing with that is mm -hmm. really cool. Dope. Yeah, it's good. All right, let's, let's talk about the big boys. <laughs> this is the cleanest. This work is so good. Like, it's the best. Dude, I recognize his work. I was like, ah, oh, that's Holly. It's but I also <laughs> see your work and I'm like, would, would. But he's always been that good, but what happened with him is when we got together, I, I, I brought some influence from, I was in Texas for a little while, and mm. I saw how they tattoo, and it's completely different. Um, we get together, and as good as he tattoos, he was just working with people that didn't expound on the style that he was going for. Okay. So... When he got the right imagery, you know what I mean? Like, his shit, like, took off, dude. His, his work is the most solid work around. 100%. I agree. 100%. Oh, I better. I better agree. <laughs> yeah. I have it on my arm, on my chest. <laughs> huh? my, my, I, I pretty, I, like, for the past three days, I've been doing black and gray, like, portrait style stuff, which I like to do. But people come to me for big Japanese. And That's what you're known for. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, and I'm blessed. You know what I mean? It's I'll look at my work and think it's shit, but people keep coming back. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna well, you're right your there. own biggest critic. Oh, of course. I mean, I think that's a huge part of like you, you know, constantly involved. getting better, to get better. Is yeah. if you don't have that mentality, if you look at every tattoo you go and 
and like, oh man, that's the shit, you know, like <laughs> nobody can fucking beat that, you know, <laughs> then you're fucked, yeah. man, you yeah. know, cause you think you're like at the top and you're never going to be there. Yeah. If you think you're there, you're, you're mm-hmm. wrong. You're only going to fall, you know? So and, one of my mentors is always like, dude, you got to keep evolving. Right. Yeah. And if you're, if you're already at the table and you're not staying at the table, your ass is going to be on the menu. Yeah. He yeah. always says that shit. Right, because people are working twice as hard that are under you, trying to beat you at every single thing you do. It doesn't even, it doesn't matter what you're bringing to the table, but you better master it and just keep evolving, getting better, finding better solutions. You know, and I know that what Inc has gotten, it changes better companies. The we we're talking about all your guns, yeah. right? Like, oh, this guy opens a door, a drawer, and he's. Uh, and it's like, what was that, 30 machines? Yeah, well, it's probably, I mean. 40 minimum? At, at least. In one drawer. <laughs> yeah. Got another one. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. He's I'm like, envious yeah, yeah, yeah. of those drawers. Dude, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, I was but, like, you know, I mean, it's just like you said, though. Things evolve and things change. And, and you evolve, too, because there's machines in those drawers that, like, that would be the machine that I used every day for every single tattoo for years. And then all of a sudden, you know, I get my eye on something, I buy a different machine. And then now that machine sucks in this new machine I use every day for years, you know? See, we, put, we like to put a little, that our equipment has like a mojo with it. You right, know what dude, I mean? There's little course, gremlins man. that come in at night, just like with motorcycles, they'll tinker with shit. You'll pick up a machine that you used yesterday and it sucks today. And there's no reason why. So luckily you have a drawer full, you grab another one, use it, come back to that one two days later and it's run like a chum. Yeah. It's weird how it's, stuff works. It's, it's so strange. But it's true. <laughs> it's very true. All right. So I, I yeah. thought this guy was just a cuckoo. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I know I used to do it with my bike too, right? I'm like, oh, dude, I don't yeah. think this is the exhaust. What's that noise? Bike. Yeah, I was like, yeah. why? No, I got to switch the exhaust, yeah. all right? Or I got to change the suspension on it. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's just like, dude, it's not running right. That's right. Fuck, now I got to go back to this other exhaust system and, you know, whatever. Or I'm going to switch the front end to the spring front end and then it just changes the whole ride. Sh- rattle to death. And then it's you rattle and then you're wonderful. like, this is not the ride that I wanted. Or Like, this looks cool, but it feels terrible. Yeah, yeah I cannot ride this for more than three hours or I'm going to die. Yeah, you yeah. know, and it, it, it's just all this changes and it's all look, it's all perception. But the other thing, so let's talk about you. Let's talk about the whole fitness conversion of you yeah right because this is this is one of those transformations you like walk in i was like dude it's been what eight months and you're looking yeah. fucking good yeah. bro what's Shane's going like on the epitome yeah transformation i was like Tuesday, dude man. this guy yeah i was like this well, is you gotta figure i'm 48 okay i was i was 46 ish when i started trying to get in shape i got a six and a nine year old i've got a uh a, a fatherly figure that these kids are looking up to, and I'm at their soccer game. You saying you had dad bod? I have fucking serious dad bod. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, we know. Yeah, but yeah. They don't know, right? So, but so like, you, part, part of it was, you know, bad habits, terrible Dude, I, eating I, habits. I mean, because I know. I at our job, like we would eat before work and then a huge meal after work. And it and wasn't that, the healthiest of meals either. Dude. Dude, I remember. I was like, "What the yeah. fuck are you guys eating yeah. here all the time?" Yeah. So. I uh, Mark started getting in shape. He started running a lot, and I'm like, man, and he lost like 80 pounds like that, dude. Like, he yeah, lost a bunch. It melted. Yeah. Like, holy shit! So I started going with him to a gym, a commercial gym, and <clears throat> one of the ruse they have there is they come up to you and be like, hey, let's do some measurements on you. He's like, oh, you could really use a trainer, and I'm like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm gonna bite. <laughs> I need some help. I need some help. So I committed to three months with this guy. And it was the best thing I ever did because he he wasn't some yoked up dude just trying to like have me throw weight around. He was like, all that weight over there, that's not you. See those bands over there and right those on. TRX right. cables? That's you. And Range I'm like, of motion. That's what do you do? Solid trainer. Right so there. he got my core. He taught me how to hold my core. He taught me how to tighten my core and taught me how to engage engage the shit that was going to be the foundation for if I wanted to go further and start throwing some weight around. And it was the best three months of money that I ever spent. Because from there, even when those months were over, he was like, do you want to renew? And I'm like, do I need to? And he's like, no, No. you're good, dude. And I'm like, thank you. And so that sent me on my path. Right. You know what I mean? And I still talk to the guy today. I'll send him videos of lifts, and he's like, 
you're fucking crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which I think you are, but. Right. So, okay, so let's talk about, so you get through this, you, you have a nice solid program. Yes. And then you're like, dude, I like lifting heavy shit. Yeah. And I, and I got. Because you're a power lifter. Now, yes. I got sure. involved with these kids who were the, I, I like to say they're video game kids that turned power lifters. So they're nerds, for lack of a better word, which I'd say with, you know, as a fucking compliment. Right. So that. they bring that mentality to powerlifting and they showed me mathematically and program wise how you can get stronger and not kill yourself. And that's what I've been doing for shit, nine months now. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been night and, and day, dude. Yeah. Night and day. 100%. The only problem is, is it takes a lot of time. Like, seriously. <laughs> so you your fishing eat, has suffered. Fishing has suffered, which. <laughs> You know, I've been fishing a lot with my kids lately during the day, which is awesome. Right. Um, But we got a fishing trip coming up, which we haven't done in ever. We're finally going to get out and go out, you know, for three days and do some serious fishing, which I'm super excited about. But, yeah, that suffered because I have to make sure I get enough sleep, you know, like I'm no no chicken, you know what I mean? And I go for two and a half hours in the morning, eat, uh, eat before, eat after, come to work, eat. Work a little bit more, eat, go home, sleep, wake up, eat. It's the same shit, but I've never felt better. You so know that's what I mean? we're talking about. It's just yeah. like, so we get to a point. So we were into the stupid shit, destroying ourselves. Good for me, oh. alcohol and drugs is my yeah. thing, right? Lots and you're just love. like, of all, of all of them, <laughs> nonstop, right? But then we get to a point where like, dude, this isn't, this is it's never fulfilled me, mm-hmm. right? And then you, you find something. For me, it was fitness, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know the 12 steps and all that, but then it was entrepreneurship, right? Mm-hmm. And then it was the gym. I fucking love this shit. I love working out. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a feeling I get. But then you're like, I want more. Now I want to eat better. Now you want to figure out how do I get this feeling that I used to get being fucked up, how do I get it healthier, mm-hmm. Right? So now, like, we had the conversation, like, all right, let's talk about what you're eating, bro, (laughs) and at what time. So it's like, we all want to start feeling better, you know, just so we could do the things that we love more. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Right? And to spend more time with the people we love. Of course. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's what we're doing, That's all that matters. That's that's all that matters, right? And uh, that's, for me, it's the number one priority, and it's, it's a mind, you know, and you guys always have that mindset of do the right thing. Be cool, right? <laughs> Don't be a dick, which is basically be cool, right? Yeah. If, if you're not a dick yeah. to other people, you know, it's good energy. Like people say energy and the whole thing now, but it's just be cool, man. Don't be a dick to other people. Treat people like you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Same thing our parents told us when we were kids. Right. You know? we're, we're just, like, now they we're just, knew what they were talking they, they, about. Yeah. Everything my parents told me came true, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Tell me who you hang out with and I'll, I'll tell you exactly who you are. Fuck. Right. You're right. Yep. right. You hang around drug addicts and fucking losers, you're a loser, dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but I'm the best loser out of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not as much I, of a I'm loser not as, as bad, right? I, I, yeah. yeah. Such bullshit. Lies, right? <laughs> yep. And then it's like now, like, all I want to do is be the best. Dude, I'm going to be a dad in four weeks already. This is crazy. <laughs> right? And now you're like, what? You know, and I want to be the best dad I could be. Yeah. I want to be the best boss I can be. I want to be, you know, everything. I want to be the best entrepreneur I can be. I want to be the best friend I can be. But it all seems to be, if you're a good person, don't be a dick, right? And it all comes that, back. That's man. been my mantra for, I've been sober for a little while now. And the thing that I always come back to is if I do the next right thing, no matter how small it is, if it was like this morning going and looking for fucking water for this stupid ass hurricane, it's probably not coming. We haven't even thought that. <laughs> that for me, this is Florida. Do we have hurricanes every other week? You yeah, know what but for me, that was the next right thing. I, just I to was give a peace of mind. Just right. For peace of mind. For and pe- so if I do the next right thing, no matter how small throughout the course of the day, it was a successful day and I don't have anything to look back on when I go to bed tonight and be like, you don't have to go to bed thinking tomorrow I'm going to have to apologize to this person. Yeah. You know, that's a terrible feeling. Yeah. (laughs) Because in the moment, sometimes you get heated, you say things you don't mean. And then, you know, as the day wears on and, and 
that anger kind of subsides and you look at it from like a rational point of view, you're like, shit, man, I owe them an apology. I fucked up, yeah. you know, and that's a terrible feeling to go to bed with. Yeah. So, you know, as long as you try throughout the day to never have to apologize for someone for your behavior. I feel like I apologize. You're doing a, a good job. Yeah. More than ever, but it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I over apologize sometimes. No, you know? dude, there's no such thing as over apology because I'm <laughs> always fucking up, right? But at least yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't sit in my own shit yeah. forever because that's what gets me sick, of right? Yeah. It's like, fuck. That's where that little creature hangs out. That. And like, fucking mm. cooking that. The, yeah, cooking the, the uh, here come the fuckets. <laughs> here come the fuckets. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, I mean, it's it's just keeping your side of the street clean. That's you it, know? bro. That's and that's the only thing you can control, and, and you just have to keep that in mind, you know? You you can't do anything about how someone else reacts to what you do or say if you know that your intentions are right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That right there? It's it's all principles. It's simple, though. It's yeah. principles, and it's simple, though. But I yeah. tend to complicate everything. Of I do, course. Right? Of course. Ah. <sighs> Let's talk about something else. What do we talk about that always is a fun topic? Hurricanes. Thanks. Hurricanes. Let's talk about <laughs> so, all right. So, we have a hurricane. Hurricane Dorian. 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 The, the guy Fuck I tattooed name. yesterday was Dorian. like, we might be fucked because this is my divorce lawyer's name and he royally fucked me. So, <laughs> this could be bad. This is the this motherfucker. Could be bad. This is the guy that's going to screw us, right? Yeah. But, I mean, it's the projected path is Florida to North Carolina. You know what I mean? It's like, the odds are crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. And we've lived through, I've been down here 15 years. You've been down here the same. We've lived through them and over-prepared, under-prepared. It's like, what the fuck? Fill up your car. I filled up my car this morning. Water, I'm going to get some water. And you're good. Yeah. And live off some Doritos, dude. Yeah, that's it. You this know? is the only excuse you get to while there's no power. You <laughs> exactly, know? Dude, this is the only thing. What do you got? I got six bags of Doritos and yeah. LaCroix. This is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I couldn't find water last <laughs> last hurricane. I couldn't find water and I bought LaCroix. 20 LaCroix. <laughs> 20 cases of LaCroix. My wife was like, are you kidding me? I was like, we're going to be so hydrated. No, but we're, we're not. We're not, no. yeah. not going to be that hydrated, but we're not going to die. Right. Yeah. All right. I, I solved. I problem solved right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Dude, it was December and we still had the crows. Still in my have house. the crows. Damn. My wife was like, if I have to drink one or more, you know, yeah. like, you're not drinking a Mayan. But you know, it's 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 always good, man. It's there's nothing better. And I feel like so. Hanging out with good people is great. Mm. Hanging out with people that elevate you is what it's all about for mm. me, right? And I I feel like that every time I step into Black Pelican, I'm guaranteed a good day. That's a fact. Well, technically. I was going to say that. And then I'm like, <laughs> but then the needle starts. <laughs> and then I'm like looking at Holly and I'm like, you asshole. No, I mean, you fell asleep last time. No, I did, but I cheated. And, and I'm an open admitter. I used the cream, and, but I That's just fell asleep. But you fell asleep. I did. That's a good day. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I was like, dude, the guy was even like, this guy fell asleep. I was like, yeah. Yeah. He fell asleep. It was great. That's a good day. Uh, and you I felt did. like the toughest guy in the world when that guy asked. Yeah, I was like, dude, did he, he just fall like, asleep? Did he fall asleep? And you just looked up. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little do you know. Thanks for waking me up, Dick. Dick. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, like what has ended up happening through this community that we have down here is most of the people that we tattoo, we know in less than seven degree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's like, like four everybody people. Everybody knows everybody, so the clientele that we're dealing with is people like, like us. us. You know, what I they're mean? all. Good people, you know, with yeah. with good intentions yeah. that aren't pieces of shit or fuck ups or you know. I mean, we get our share now, trust me, because it's Ain't still everybody. a tattoo shop. But th that old biker tattoo shop is gone, which is sad because that because that was the OG. Dude. That was yeah. crazy yeah. shit, dude. That you didn't come in talking shit or you didn't like. Oh no! And if you did, it was you it dumped. was your ass. Yeah. <laughs> it was your yeah. ass. I remember which, that. Which I miss, but at the same time, it's it's nice to come to work and be like. We have to deal with, you know, yeah. consent forms, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you're not under <laughs> the influence. Of three. <laughs> coming, coming to sit with us at noon. <laughs> but that's cool, you know. Yeah. You, you have those girls. All right, so let's talk about something that's this whole recovery, right? So there's a yeah. big recovery community, and all of a sudden, you'll see a guy six months over or a girl six months over, not one tattoo, right? Yeah. Six months later, covered, covered. Substitution, yeah. my friend. Uh, and you're like, what it is. dude, I, I'm a victim of that. Because when yeah. I start, I'm like, dude, I need more. Yeah. Right? Because 
it looks dope. But all of a sudden, I'm like, dude, what happened? I was like, dude, I don't know, man. I went in there for like a shoulder piece. Next thing you know, yeah, I can't stop. I was like, well, is is it the pain? Is it there's something about getting tattooed that's like mystic, right? Yeah, it, it's the whole experience of yeah. it, right? It, it's the experience between picking out what you're gonna do. I think that's always a cool part, and then Holly shoots it down. <laughs> Every single time. Hey, man, I want to do this. Nope. Yeah, 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 that would be cool, but we're not. We're going to do this right here. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, or like, But people are starting to get that what we say is in their best interest. Yeah. Which time. is a huge thing yeah. because I used to have a resentment. I'm like, dude, that's not what I want. Yeah. And you're like, dude, you see what, what you want, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. No, I was right. waiting for that. I have that. a whole body full of that shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly. Right? So you're like, dude, and that's for my impatience, right? I was like, dude, how long was I talking about what I wanted, how yeah. we were going to do it? I was like, I'm not ready. I think I even drew it up at one point. Yeah. And I was like, like, oh, no, I that's don't, not, I don't know. That's not it. You talked to Shane about doing it, and then all of a sudden, you take one trip out of town, you come back, and you fucked up. I have a black blob on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're working on it. I like that's that's a that's a good learning experience. I think that's but it's prime time real estate, which is what angers me so much, right? It's like ah, oh, makes it an I even waited. better learning experience, though. You know, Dude, if you had gotten that tattoo I waited on the back of your thigh, fifteen years not to do it, and all of a sudden I was like, all right, here we go. And I mean, that just speaks for you can. But that's I mean, life, we're, right? We're addicts. We're humans above and beyond everything. We have isms that supersede addiction. And oh, we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it. It's just a matter of now, are we willing to pay the consequences or not? Yeah. And sometimes we aren't given a choice <laughs> to pay those consequences. Yeah, nature you know, lady. And I think when people are young in recovery, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I want something that I can do that I can be fucking proud of. Right. You know what I mean? Because everything I did pre- Prior, I wasn't. It was a shit bag. You know, I was having to apologize for apologizing, for lying, for apologizing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, just retarded shit. So now I get sober. What can I do for me that I'm going to have to live with? And that you can see. And that I can see. It's tangible. It's tangible. We need something physical. And I feel everything good because so, I feel better. Yeah, I'm working on myself and now, right? Yeah. Because. And then you just get stuck. And it's not a bad place to be. No, no, no. <laughs> Dude, I love it. You know, and I love the conversations we have every single time. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna. Be. My wife is like, hey, so where are you going? Oh, I'm gonna go to Black Belt and just to go talk. She's like, all right, we'll see you tomorrow. She's like, so no plans today. I was like, no, 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 I'll be back in three hours. You know. Yeah, yeah. She's like, in the history <laughs> of our relationship, you have never even been to, you know, to the tattoo shop for less than four hours. Right. I was like, mm, probably true. And it's probably in less than five every time. Or when I tapped out. Yeah. That you lie to me. The eternal 15 minutes. Dude, yeah, 15 be, more yeah, minutes. I'd be done in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I told you we'd be done in an hour, you'd just get up and walk like, out get, the door. Get out of here. I'm like, yeah, I can't do it. No, but now we have, you know, other methods. Yes. But that's the fun part, man. I love, you know, there's, there's nothing better than having people on the show that are, one, sober. I love that. Two, successful entrepreneurs because... You've survived the first year, the second year, and the third year. And not only that, you guys are evolving constantly. In the fourth year, in the fifth year. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Which is every year there's a challenge, right? Because yes. I remember two years ago when the hurricane hit, we almost had to shut down of FTX course. because all our clientele drove their clients out mm. for a month and then never got back in track. I mean, look at us. We're a service industry. Exactly, The dude. service we provide is not that fucking important. Yeah. When it really all boils down. Dude, I mean, it is. Thing. Thing. Yeah. You don't have to have a tattoo. No. You don't to have to exist. have a personal trainer either. True. Fun, right? So we're it's a luxury. It's the same thing. It's a luxury. Absolutely. We get yeah. cut first from everything. Oh, yeah. But what keeps them coming back is good service. Yep. The integrity of everything we do. Mm -hmm. And how do we keep evolving to become better? Right? You guys surround are ourselves with people that are better than us. That's it, man. Yep. And, and, you know, it's always evolving. It's always, you know, growing mm -hmm. through our fucking... Hard-headed lessons, yes. right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's it, man. So let's talk about where do people follow you, right? If you uh, you guys want to get followed on Insta, whatever, you know, look yeah, up the Black shop. Black Pelican Tattoos on Instagram. Um, our website's blackpelicantattoos.com. 
It's There's no S on there, but like that's cool. Tattoo. <laughs> on either one. You can see how often I travel <laughs> he, to he's, he's, he, yeah. he's definitely doing the marketing on that one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tattoo, period. All right. Good. Yes. And then uh, handle on Insta? Uh, Shane's is at Shane Woodward, and mine's difficult. It's at Jason underscore X underscore Holly, so H-O-L-L-E-Y. Such a hip. I know. I just have to be cool and add underscores in there, you know? I have to make you hit that button on the keyboard. So yeah. many people. I hate it. But All right, man. Social media is the shit. It is the shit, but not only that, you get to see, like, I'm like, fuck, I gotta go to Holly. You know, and now it's... Yep. My next tattoo when we're done here is with you when I get this thing off. It's going to be fun. Yep. Now, I know you're waiting. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you're going through now is much worse than what I'm going to do to you. Well, it's still, I got to wait for it. Well, sorry, okay. Patience is everything, my friend. It's, I'm learning a lesson. Yes. Right? So if I waited 15 years, I could wait another five months, I guess. Yes. Yeah. But it hurts. Yeah. Laser. Fuck that laser. Like Jason. <laughs> huh? Jason's analogy is just taking some bacon grease and just... That's exactly what it is. Or a big rubber band. Just like, pop! Pop! Yeah. And she stops every time you're getting in the zone. Why? That's her thing. Talk Are you okay? Oh. Lady. <laughs> Lady, I'm not okay. You're like, zapping me with a yeah. laser. Don't talk to me. Go. Just get yeah. it done. Uh, yep. Get her done. Yes. It's fast. It's 10 minutes of hell, but just get it done. I don't want you stopping every time. Are you stopping? No, I don't want to stop. All right, just yeah. go. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're working on it. But man, I want to thank you guys for coming, man. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Great Thanks conversation. For us. I hope to see you guys in here. Yeah. No, I, we showed them the toys, so. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit left on my. Membership in this <laughs> so we'll see what sure he does he doesn't have a membership over there nah it's all right no. it's okay and you're always here anyway yeah so we're always fun all right guys i appreciate you guys Thanks coming so dude so much fun appreciate it uh, we'll be here for year six yes and that'd be awesome seven. don't and be out of town for apparently this guy keeps fucking oh, a yeah. black book <laughs> <laughs> I was in San Diego, so, dude, thanks a lot, man. This was so much fun. Absolutely.